Hello everyone, Diane here. Today I'm going to be uh, giving you a quick peek inside something which I find quite inspiring when I uh, can't think of what to paint and that's my, my thing here called a cross between an art journal and a junk journal. Now I made this um, because I was curious as to what a junk journal was and um, uh, so I started to watch some videos on YouTube about junk journaling and in fact, I'm going to introduce you today through Skillshare to a lady who does, uh, who's got some Skillshare videos on it as well, who's quite good. Um, but I was watching um, the paper outpost, I think it's called, isn't it, with Pam. And uh, she showed me how to make this amazing book and this is properly bound and everything. And so I did that. Um, and then another lady sent me a whole um, other book that she'd made and a lot of these inserts and um, amazing things so I just had to incorporate those too but I'm going to just quickly um, show you some pages in this book um, which uh, incorporate some of the little odds and ends that I paint when I don't have anything else to do with them. Just need to drink water sorry. Um, you know when you're doodling and you um, you know doing something like this just playing around with paint and brush and stuff and then you think, oh, well, you know, it's obviously no good for anything serious. But you can cut these little bits and pieces up and we're going to do one in a minute together. Um, something like this or, or this. And, you know, you'll often find like individual leaves in something like this look really nice. Or you might spend half an hour while you're on the phone doing something like that and that. Um, or you might experiment with a new technique or you might be swatching some colours for a video and then afterwards um, just do some doodles on top. You know, that kind of thing, which is quite interesting to do. And I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to show you a few pages here. This is, um, this is absolutely chock-a-block with all sorts of things and um, things like letters that I've received from people. I used um, something like this. This is just a painting that I did and I cut up just to line the inside. So that's another idea for what you can do with your um, failed paintings. They don't have to be thrown away. Um, other, you'll, you'll remember we did a, a video, something like that with these um, things. And um, so I've stuck uh, letters that I've received in here as well. And um, dried flowers that I've um, dried from the garden. This is another one of those um, uh, inserts from that lady and I stuck this envelope on there. This is a piece of, it's a photocopy of that particular painting. Um, you'll recognize this, this is a video we did a while ago and I photocopied that and put that in there because I thought that would look pretty with some, some lace. And this is a piece of painting that a friend of mine did years ago. This is from a paper napkin that's decoupaged and stuck in there. Um, that's, that's from the packaging for the um, colour sheets from Viviva, which I thought was quite nice when it's cut up. This is painting I did on holiday in Mexico about 20 years ago or more. San Miguel, anyone been there? San Miguel de Allende. Great artist's retreat. This is another doodle and so on. So you can see different ways. It's a piece of fabric there, I think, um, that you can incorporate things that you've been given and things that you've created to make. So this, is a, this is a letter that I received from my father-in-law at the time when I'd just given birth to my first son. My, first, my son, I only had one. <laughs> my second son was a daughter. And then there's letters from, from Denise and other lovely people. And uh, yeah, so just going through, you'll see some of the um, Painter Birder days that we did. And I was practicing um, stitching a painting onto a piece of other paper, handmade paper. And one of the things I like to do is to make books, bookmarks that I can put inside these journals to hold pages, you know. Um, this is decoupage some more dried flowers. This is a very, very old note lit from, oh, this is from the 1960s, that is. I don't know how come that was hanging around. And it's, I, I think these are wonderful ideas to 
to keep all the bits and pieces that otherwise languish in a drawer. And uh, somebody gave me this. Um, yeah, and so every now and again, I just open it up and look through it just to give myself some inspiration. This is nice. I might do this as a um, bookmark soon. I think that would be quite nice. So anyway, you get the message, I think. I'm sort of quickly flipping through. This is from Gar Carolyn, very inspiring. We made a video of that with her permission. She allowed me to use her idea, which is lovely. These dragonflies also have been very popular and roses always are. And so you can just, you know, bits of your paintings that haven't quite succeeded, cut them out, put them in a journal. You don't have to make the journal. You can um, obviously buy one and just use it as a kind of creative. I think it's nicer than just sticking one painting in to cut them up, <laughs> cut them up and um, mess around with them like this, bits and pieces here. You know, some of these bits are really nice and there was probably a bit in the middle of that that wasn't very nice at all. Um, and I think this is such a lovely way to keep letters that you've been given, you know, if you don't want to put the actual original letter, just make a photocopy of it so you don't lose the original, but you can get to look at the copy. And um, yeah, so some little doodles here. And uh, this was a, a, lav a, a, a lilac sprig, which I didn't really think had succeeded very well. These were the sort of tryouts and I stuck some um, uh, gauze over the top of it. It looks better with stars, I think. And uh, just doodling, this nice little bunch of flowers there I did while I was on the phone and another hyacinth and yeah, so there we are, we're back to the beginning. My mother always used to read all her books from the back to the front and uh, it's because she was a gypsy, she used to say it's a gypsy habit to always start at the back. She always started a magazine at the back. So anyway, I'm gonna pop that over there. I'm just going to interrupt myself here to tell you about my Skillshare discovery for this month. Rudy Rajpal is from India and her course is called Creative Art and Junk Journaling. She's a multidisciplinary artist and creator of many artistic skills. What I love about Rudy's class is that she offers guidance and structure in the world of journaling, which itself can be somewhat overwhelming. By watching her class, you'll be introduced to several different layouts, materials, and much, much more. And she shows you how to confidently create your own journal. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning platform with thousands of classes for you to enjoy. Every week, there are new classes for you to explore. And because Skillshare has kindly sponsored this video, if you're one of the first 1,000 people to sign up using the unique link in the description below, you'll get one month's free trial. I love being a member of Skillshare because if ever I'm short of inspiration, I know I'll find some on their platform, which is ad-free and even has subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. Skillshare membership has so much to explore in so many creative areas, from art through music to Zen meditation. You'll find support from other creatives and you'll experience real personal growth with a Skillshare membership. So why not give Skillshare a try now? A month's free membership could open many new doors for you. And now let's get back to our painting. So today, as you can see, I'm going to use my Paul Rubens watercolor um, box here, which um, I was kindly gifted by them. And so I thought it would be a good idea. We, we did a, an opening up and a swatching uh, yesterday, but today I'm going to have a go at painting some flowers with it. Um, this is going to be pretty, um, what's the word, on the fly, if you like, because um, I haven't used this box before for anything other than swatching it out. But I have used it enough to know that, first of all, I do need to give it a bit of a spray. Give it a wake up call. Doesn't need too much water, but it does need some. Um, I do know that this uh, violet, lilac, mauve, purple, what's it called, violet color is quite light. So it's quite a good one to start with. So we'll start by just popping down some shapes. And when you, if you're a beginner, <coughs> A beginner in uh, painting, don't worry, you just let the brush make the shapes. You don't really need to try too hard. You can put something a little bit darker at the bottom if you want to let it bleed up a little bit. <clears throat> and um, I think it's always a good idea to have some green mixed up separately so that you can uh, 
um, put in some uh, some stems and some leaves easily. Like that. You could do it like that. Um, you can... Um, I'm just playing, okay? So we're going to add a little bit of, maybe a little bit of this. What I'm doing, try, I'm trying to connect my brain. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to connect my brain. It's not working. Um, there are days, aren't there, when these things happen and your brain doesn't work, but you've got to do a video. So I've put a little bit of blue, and that blue is cyan. Is it? Is it that one? No, Payne's Grey. A little bit of Payne's Grey in with the violet, and we have this lovely mauve. And now I'm just doing what, what they call in the trade an element. That is to say, it's a piece of a painting. That is to say, some leaves on a stem. An element. And then you can just drop a little bit of the same color but darker into the base of each of those leaf shapes. And it makes it suddenly look very professional. And you can just join them on if you want to. You don't have to because they look quite nice when they're loose. Join them onto the stem with little doobly what's it's. Okay, now without wishing to waste the paint, I'm just going to try and wash as much of it off as I can before I rinse it. And then We'll look for another colour. Let's look for this mauve again. And let's add a little bit of um, pink, let's say uh, magenta, that one, to it. So we have a kind of, another kind of lilac, um, a little bit pinkier. We can just do little pointy thingy what's it's like that. Then we could put some purple in the middle. And go to our green. Some little grey leaves. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill this page with elements. Um, if you do the leaves first, like this, you could do it that way. Then you put the stem in. Go back to our lilac. Maybe we'll try a sort of one of these things. And then we're going to want to put some darker violet in the middle. So we've got Payne's Grey with, with uh, Carmin or Magenta, just to make it a little bit darker in the middle. And then if you add some green, to that grey, to that uh, violet, you'll get a nice grey. And then you can put grey. I think I quite like grey leaves on roses, don't you? I don't know why, it just looks nice. And I should do the leaves with serrated edges, but I can't be bothered today. It's Sunday, you know. And uh, just finished watching, watching something on television called The Queen's Gambit. I don't know if any of you have seen it, um, about a prodigy, child prodigy um, chess player beating the Russians at their own game, so to speak. It's quite fun. Have you seen it? Now we'll go back to the green and we're just... Take some light, some light green, and what shall we do? Um, I'm in danger of having too many stems because I like 
leaves, but we'll do some couple of round leaves there. And then take the lilac from there. And we're just going to do a blob, a couple of blobs. Like that, perhaps. And So I'm not, I really am not constructing anything here um, particular. Just trying out different techniques. Doesn't run where it's dry. It does run where it isn't dry. So I suppose the thing is, if you if you feel like doing something like this, you can just, you know, paint along with me as I'm doing it. And you never know what you're going to get, do you? Okay, so perhaps we'll put some more of this very pale lilac colour down here. If you're anything like me, you'll find that it, you, you, I find after about 20 minutes of painting, I, I start to kind of relax a little bit and that's when I, it's conceivable that I might produce something <coughs> uh, worth cutting up. Oops, that was meant to be thin, but it's not thin, so we'll make it fat. And I think what we need now is some, some berries. Not that colour there. Um, we were talking about um, these paints yesterday. Oh, I'll show you something. Um, here, I did some green swatching. Like that. You've seen that one often enough. Uh, here. Now, this is two pages in my Viviva sketchbook, and this is one brand of paint, and this is another brand of paint. And I just was trying to mix as many greens as I could, just using the greens that are in the tin and um, lemon yellow. I did the same for both types. And what's interesting is that I came up with pretty much the same colours. I think you could probably say that there's not much to choose between them. Um, this is the Paul Rubens set. And this is the A Gallo set of 24. This costs about $38. This costs two, 200, 200 and something dollars or 200 pounds, I think it is. Anyway, so when you think about it, um, there's a big difference there, isn't there? But there's not much difference when you look at it. But when you look more closely, um, it is true, I think, that these colours are quite a bit more transparent. These ones tend to be a little bit more opaque, a bit more chalky. Um, they're just as intense though, and they give you the same colours, 
So for a beginner, um, I have to say that you don't need to spend that kind of money because you can do what you need to do with these pretty much. Although I'm painting with them right now, I'm not used to them. I'm not completely sure um, what I can do. You know, it's sometimes it catches you out and something comes out stronger or different from what you expect. And I've forgotten what I was doing. Oh, I was gonna do some berries, wasn't I? Right, when I, when I do berries, I like to do them sort of round and leave a little dot of light at some point, generally speaking, on one side, just to give a little bit of the effect of them being round. They look like elderberries. These brushes have got a nice sharp point to them, which is helpful for drawing fine lines. When it's still wet, you can just drop some extra color in the bottom and that will bleed and give you a nice effect. Let's come back with a few more of these berries. Sometimes it's easier to put the berries down first and afterwards add the uh, the little stalks. It's nice to have a little bit of contrast there. And I think we probably want some of those berries over here to balance it off a little bit. This is not what you would call a composition. It's not a, these ones I'm doing a little bit more roughly, a bit more closely together. So now they are tending to look a little bit more like um, a different kind of flower. fairly big sort of leaf, perhaps. These things, they don't have to begin and end anywhere particular. This one wants to be a bit darker, I think it's a bit wishy-washy, isn't it? We'll see how it dries when they dry. It's usually best to stick when you're doing something like this. You can either go completely multicolor or else um, try to perhaps limit it. Perhaps it's easier to keep color scheme if you limit it to, say, for example, one pink, one violet, or whatever, and one green, and maybe a tad. A little bit of blue. I think we need another flower here. Uh, shall I do another round one? I'm not very good at doing round flowers, I, I don't know. Although they always look a little bit better when they're dry. And honestly, you never really know what's going to turn out. I think I need some longer leaves here. I haven't done any long ones yet. I 
Yeah, you never know whether what you're doing is, is going to um, provide you with some kind of material for your junk journal or your art journal. If nothing else, though, it's probably useful for the backing and backing and fronting pages inside, you know, where you've found it. You need something to cover up your binding. You will probably find that, unless you're completely ambidextrous, that your leaves come out better when you do them one way than the other. And I definitely, I definitely noticed that. Sort of left leaning or right leaning. I can't do it on this side. I have to turn the paper around if I'm being a little bit fussy. Back to the violet mixed with a bit of green. I think I might do some more berries down here. Let's get a bit more red in there. A little bit more green. The violet is very nice, but it's a bit weak. And uh, I can see that one's going to get worn out very quickly. Oh, and I was mixing it with um, this colour before, Naples Yellow with Violet to give me a soft pink. That's very opaque, so it'll need a lot of water to prevent that from being really too opaque. So let's, because the um, this Naples Yellow is very, very opaque. Do a few little star-shaped ones down here. Vary the sizes a bit. And then pop in a bit of green. So I have to turn it round if I'm going to get them in anything like even. And now we're just finishing filling in some gaps. Always fill your spaces with berries. If you struggle with the um, the very fine stems that you want to draw. You could use a pencil, a watercolour pencil, for example. That's one thing. Could use a pen. Could use a watercolour brush. Whoops. And now we're going to see whether um, the paint washes off where I've put my hand on it. 
not a very good brush to do that with. You want something a little bit stiffer. Maybe. Maybe it'll come off. But we're not too worried. Really good paper will give up the paint really easily. Less good paper will tend to hold on to it, but I think probably we'll be okay. It's near enough. What a mess, eh? Never mind, it's only a trial. Okay, so I think we're about done. We could still put in a few more of these little dark purpley clusters of berries if we wanted to. And um, well, maybe we could sharpen that one up a little bit with a little bit more shadow in there. And then I think we're done. So, so far, so good. I am, oh, look, I can't possibly leave these poor things without veins, can we? Uh, let's just put some little center lines down there. Um, quite happy with the paints. I'm sure that if you, if you want to give these a try, you won't be disappointed, I'm sure. You can um, find them in my shop if you go to, I think I've put them in there, I'm pretty sure I have, amazon.com slash shop slash Diane Anton studio, and you will find them there. And or do go and have a look at our new website, which has just been revamped. Tamsin's been working very hard on that, and it looks much better now. Um, you can get your free sketches to download over there if you are looking for them they're all there and they're better organized and you can see them better and all the Christmas ones are all separate now well not separate but you can find them more easily so there we are that's given my Paul Rubens a little bit of a test drive and um, hope you enjoyed that for a Sunday afternoon meander up, up and down a piece of paper um, yeah. Now you could cut that up and use bits of that in your junk journal or in, make it into bookmarks or something like that. Um, I think it would probably work quite well. So give it a try and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>